three. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, so this week, uh, we're looking at the middle of September, uh, September 17th to the 23rd. And first, I'll just mention briefly, on Monday is uh, the, the 9th, 18th is the Feast of St. Joseph Cupertino, patron saint of um, pilots and all kinds of interesting things. He levitated. And so uh, there's, I have a link to the movie, which many have probably, probably seen, The Reluctant Saint, certainly worth seeing, even if you've seen it already. And then Tuesday is the Feast of St. Genarius or San Gennaro, and there's an article, a link about the annual, his blood liquefies on certain, usually on his feast day and a few other times during the year as well. And also on, uh, on the following day, or that same day, is the Feast of Our Lady of Lost Slat, which I believe I talked about a little bit last year. Um, it's with the two children, Melanie and Maximin, or Maximin, um, who uh, had the apparition of Our Lady where she was weeping, seated, seated and weeping. And it was a rather, well, the, the apparition itself and then a couple of the secrets that were kind of told, told to the children later revealed, uh, ap ap apocalyptic ones uh, for really the end of time of the Antichrist. Um, so I think I have, a, I, have an, I have a link for an article on that. But I think one thing that's I did mention did not mention when I spoke about this I believe last year is the fact um, that this um, apparition, which occurred in 1846, was a wonderful confirmation to Sister Marie de Saint Pierre, the uh, French nun, uh, the Carmelite nun in France, who was having um, the revelations about the holy face of Jesus, and so she prayed to Our Lady. At the, during in 1846 to, for some confirmation that these revelations she was receiving from our Lord were authentic um, being very humble and and then she soon learned about um, from Venerable Leo the Pont about the apparitions to uh, of Our Lady to to Melanie and Maximum which were approved a few years later and the theme and the apparitions uh, the, the sort of public one um, not related to the ap ap apocalyptic secret, had to do with um, uh, the need to turn from profanation of Sunday as well as blaspheming God's holy name. So it was a, it was a great confirmation to Sister Maria de Saint Pierre that um, that uh, his, the message she was receiving were authentic. So that's on uh, that's on Tuesday, and then Wednesday is um, the death of Venerable Teresa Dudzik. Um, who uh, was born in Poland but was raised in Chicago, Illinois. And she was a parishioner at the second largest parish in the whole country, um, St. Uh, Saint Stanislaus, uh, the Church of St. Stanislaus Koska. Um, and she was very active in good works in the parish and eventually she had, she was a third order um, Franciscan tertiary or third order secular Franciscan and was involved in a lot of different groups uh, Rosary Sodality, Arch Comfort Trinity, Immaculate Heart of Mary and she was very much um, uh, moved to works of mercy and I think one of her titles is the Apostle of Mercy and so she had an idea of, of starting opening, of starting a religious order of some sorts that would care for uh, people, widows, and um, as well as sick um, children who didn't have anybody, orphans, and, and, and those with various handicaps that were not being taken care of. So she, um, she tried to, um, she spent some time with the, um, trying to convince the other ladies in the Fran among the Franciscan, secular Franciscans, and eventually, um, with the approval of the pastor, they began to begin the formation of what would become a new religious order. And of course, as with anything, these new things, there's always a lot of trials and she experienced a lot of them, a lot of sufferings and trials in trying to um, get this started and even difficulties in, within, within the, the new order of sisters um, as far as personalities and jobs that were done. She was a very uh, experienced uh, seamstress and had had a very successful business used a lot of that money at the time for the for for good works so eventually um, 
they were able to begin the uh, founding of the of the new community and in I guess it was the year 18, 1897 the new building was underway where they would become their convent and also a place where they would care for the for the sick uh, and so eventually um, she at one point when, when there were a lot of crosses, she was really tempted to just to give up and leave the community. And, but she remembered what the pastor had said at the beginning that, that you know, there would be, uh, you know, you need to be willing to persevere in the crosses. And so she eventually was able to do that. And she recognized God's providence more and more as she perseveres, persevered. So it was originally known as the uh, Franciscan Sisters of Blessed uh, Conagunda, uh, but became known as the Franciscan Sisters of Chicago. And they were officially recognized in, 19, in the year 1900, and, uh, and they were right before that, and she actually became the novice mistress. She's the foundress, but then wasn't the superior for a while, and then she was reelected as the superior in 1909 and died of cancer in 1915. So I'll have a link um, of, of a, her cause for beatification, she's venerable at this time. Just one quote from her. Um, the, the criticisms of my conduct were no small advantage for my pride. I would want to bear more as long as God would not be offended. And I would consider it even greater happiness to be able to suffer for the glory of God, greater glory of God and the good of the community. Um, so she died of cancer on at the age of 58 on September 20th, 1918, and was declared venerable in the year 1994. So that's it. sister, our, our venerable sister, Teresa Dudzik. And then on Thursday, or on Wednesday, and, uh, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday of next week is uh, the Ember Days, the September, September or Fall Ember Days, the final set of Ember Days in the liturgical year. I think it may actually be the first ones, um, the first set, um, that the first of the Ember Days that were started. And eventually they would be at each of the four seasons of the year, usually about around the time of the beginning of the seasons, the natural seasons. So in this case, very close to the beginning of fall. And so I have an article a little bit about somebody on kind of how it might be celebrated today or observed today. Of course, traditionally it's days of fasting and abstinence, and that's Wednesday, uh, Friday and Saturday of next week. And then um, Thursday um, is the Feast of the Prophet Jonah. If you read the book of Jonah, it's a very short book, four chapters. So it'd be good to read that and a good thing to read for as a family. It's a lot of, some of the events are very familiar from um, as some famous events in that story, in that book. And then finally, also on Thursday is the Feast of St. Mike, uh, St. Matthew, the Evangelist and Apostle. And there's a little discussion about his life on Unformed, which you might want to take a look at. So a lot of a lot of various things going on this coming week. Uh, some of which hopefully um, can help your sanctification in your home and family life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.